It's therefore time for members' statements. The member from Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I just want to talk today about a wonderful event that took place yesterday in my riding of Thornhill. The First Chinese Seniors Association of Bonn held a Christmas tea party at the Dufferin Clark Community Centre, and they asked people to bring non-perishable goods or a $10 donation to the food bank to help those in need this holiday season. It was also a bit of a celebration for Dominic Lee, who's devoted his time and passion for the seniors community for many years, and he's actually the founder and president of the organization, and he received the Order of Vaughan for 2017. Very much deserved. We know that this award recognizes individuals who've contributed a lot to their community. And um, I just also wanted to thank Jim Kwan from Markham, who uh, always invites me and is always there and always helping out. And uh, one of my volunteers, Rebecca, was there to hand out um, sort of commemoration packages on the uh, discussion we had, the debate we had here on the Nanking Massacre. And it uh, wrote out the uh, motion put forward by the member from Scarborough Asian Court and, and mentioned her by name, included all the signatures on the cover that she had collected, and it also had the remarks from the PC caucus. Uh, myself, uh, the member for Scarborough Rouge River, and the member for Nepean uh, Carlton. And uh, it was very well received, a great crowd, lots of smiling faces, lots of home baked goodies. And I want to thank everybody who contributes to their community this holiday season and throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to speak today to recognize my sisters and brothers here from Unifor who are lobbying today for a better standard in long term care homes. I'm joining with them to ask everyone here to take a six-minute challenge with us. Six minutes. That's what long-term care workers in the province of Ontario have to wake up their patients, get them ready, and get them down to breakfast. I want everyone to set their alarms in the morning for six minutes and try to do your entire routine in six minutes. Try to plan your outfit for the day. Put on your clothes, brush your teeth, maybe grab a glass of water, and if you're a senior like most of us, get your medication. If you're really quick, you might even have a chance to shower. Try to think about how much you have to do in six minutes. If you don't think a senior, a mother, a father, a brother, or a sister of ours should have to go through that, then we ask you to join us in demanding a minimum four hours of care for seniors in long-term care facilities. I encourage you to take the six minutes challenge and show us what, what you look like after. Use hashtag six minute challenge or visit them on Facebook and share your experience. Help us fight for four hours of care for the ones we love. Thank you. Thank you. The member, students, the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Speaker. It is with a heavy heart, but a great deal of pride, that I'd like to tell you about a Kitchener resident who was a neighbour and a trailblazer who passed away recently. Rita Polson was born in 1927. In 1948, at the age of 21, she began working at the Kitchener Waterloo Record newspaper as a secretary for the advertising director. Soon after, she let her boss know that she was interested in becoming an advertising salesperson, which was unheard of at the time for a woman. But seeing potential in Rita, her boss agreed. She became the first ever female retail salesperson at the newspaper. The male staff nicknamed her Joe because they saw her as one of the boys, recognizing her ability to service accounts, her attention to detail, and the loyalty that she earned from her clients. I got to know Rita in recent years as my neighbor. When she gave up her driver's license, I began driving her to the grocery store, and Rita would let me know stories about the past. And I began looking forward to those drives, Speaker. The remarkable thing is that Rita didn't think her life was remarkable. I told her that she was the real-life Peggy Olson, a character from the TV show Mad Men uh, that is set in the world of advertising. She'd never seen the show, but she thought that the comparison was amusing. Rita passed away on November 17th at the age of 90. Speaker, Rita Polson was always cheerful, and although she didn't think that her life was that special, she was truly a Kitchener trailblazer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Rackham, Kent, Middlesex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On November 16th, the Strathroy Caradoc Fire Department held a ceremony at which 50 volunteer firefighters were recognized for their long service, which ranged from 5 to 35 years. I want to express the utmost gratitude to all these firefighters for their devotion to their work, to their community, and to their fellow citizens. There was also one volunteer that drew recognition that evening 
for extraordinary dedication, and I'd like to recognize him particularly today. Mr. Ivan McCollum was awarded the Ontario Fire Services Medal and the Fire Services Exemplary Service Medal for 50 years of service. Mr. McCollum began as a volunteer firefighter in 1967 with the Caradoc Township Fire Department in Melbourne. Today, Strathroy Caradoc continues to reap the benefits of his extensive experience. You could not ask for a more knowledgeable and skillful firefighter when it comes to the operation of any vehicle or equipment. I also want to sincerely thank his wife Janet, son Mike, and daughter Monica and their families who have supported him through his 50 years of service. Firefighting takes both a physical and a mental toll on those who are summoned by the bell. Ivan has not only managed these trials, but has also maintained a long career in the construction industry and has undertaken significant, significant community work through the Melbourne branch of the Order of Odd Fellows and through his church. I am pleased today to recognize the outstanding volunteer service of my friend, Mr. Ivan McCollum. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you very much. It is a pri privilege to once again honour the work of Hockey Helps the Homeless. On Friday, I attended the celebration of the host committee, and it was an emotional event which highlighted the positivity of volunteering. Over 120 volunteers make the One Day Pro Am tournament possible, and this year they raised $210,000 for five charity partners the YWKW, Lutherwood, Hug, one Roof and House of Friendship. This money will go towards helping people and families who are experiencing homelessness in KW, approximately 2,700 people who stay in emergency shelters in Waterloo Region each year. Freedom 55 was one of the main financial sponsors and many others who have made the tournament possible, with special thanks to the media support from Rogers through their local stations 570, Chime 96.7, and 106.7. Elizabeth Clark, the executive director of the YW, spoke on behalf of the charities, and she told us the story of Rosa, a woman who had suffered from mental health issues over the course of her life and struggled to find stable housing. She came to Elizabeth after receiving yet another eviction notice and asked if she could come back to the shelter. Because of the fundraising done by Hockey Helps the Homeless, Elizabeth could say yes. And that's the power of a community that supports our most vulnerable. The impact equals a total of 7,600 additional safe shelter bed nights in Waterloo Region, and it's an important stopgap in a province where stable funding to secure affordable housing has failed. Thanks to everyone at Hockey Helps the Homeless team, I look forward to volunteering next year, and I know that you will reach the goal of $1 million. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize the talented Scarborough Agent Court constituent, Tony Luke, the winner of the 2017 RBC Top 25 Canadian Immigrant Award. This award, RBC recognized and celebrate the untold stories of Canadian immigrants who have made significant contribution to Canada. Tony came to Canada in, when he was 16, attending high school here. He established a Can Home Group in 1989 to provide travel advice, translation, immigration tips, and business consulting. As a successful businessman, Tony believes in giving back and helping others. He began volunteering in Canada shortly after arrival. He volunteered in a number of GTA organizations such as Centre for Immigration and Community Services, Support Enhanced Access, and serve as a president of the Canada-China Overseas Exchange Association, the Canadian-China Trade Promotion Association, the Guangdong Chamber of Commerce in Canada, and canada Guangdong Overseas Friendship Association. Mr. Speaker, we ask a lot of our new Canadians, confronted with new languages, political and economic systems, geographies, culture and services. For those new Canadians like Tony Luke, not only adopt to the life in Canada, but also succeed and continue to give back to our country is nothing short of exceptionality, Mr. Speaker. RBC recognized Tony and other award recipients as nation builders. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the legislature, I want to congratulate Tony of the RBC award and thank you for his continuous contribution to Ontario and to Canada. Thank you. Thank you. Further members statement, the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I recognize a dedicated group of students from Perry Sound whose vision has given rise to an award-winning book, Building Our Bridge, Our Journey of Reconciliation. Dawson Bluer, Mackenzie Elwes, Gracie Crafts, Sarah Burns, and Taylor Judge are students at Perry Sound High School. With support from teacher Patty Jenkins, they wrote and illustrated a children's picture book that shares the story 
of their school's mission to bridge the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students. The book tells a story of peace, healing and reconciliation be that began more than 20 years ago at Perry Sound High School. They tell the story about the conflicts between students in the past and how a desire to address the issue led to the birth of the school's big drum. Gracie Crafts explains the drum played a significant role in bridging the gap between the cultures. The students submitted their book to the Me to We, We Innovate contest and won the national contest. The group traveled to Ottawa to talk about their book on the We Day stage in November. The students have been visiting schools in the area to share their book and have made presentations to the community. This heartwarming story should encourage us all to reflect on the uncomfortable truths in our history and to follow their example by learning about each other's cultures so that we too can build bridges. I am immensely proud of these young people for my writing and everyone who supported them. Chi miigwech to you all. Thank you for the member's statements. The member from Ottawa, Vanier. Merci, Monsieur le Président. I'd like to talk about the, the work of women in engineering. Let me share with you a few quotes, Monsieur le Président. A female engineering graduate noted that male high school teachers said they were surprised I was smart. Male STEM professor made jokes about how women belonged in the kitchen. My managers credit my ideas to other people, interrupt my presentation, and when I report harassment, tell me that I need a thicker skin if I want to get ahead. Another woman noted there is a bro culture within many engineering organizations. I do not want to become a man to fit in. I want to be myself at work. You might think, Mr. Speaker, that these uh, statements are drawn from an outdated publication. Sadly, these accounts were pulled from a 2017 survey that the Ontario Society of Professional Engineers that I had the pleasure of welcoming here today conducted. OSPE is the voice of the engineering community in Ontario, and since 2003, its Women in Engineering uh, Advocacy Committee has been supporting women throughout their engineering career. So they want really to make sure that STEM, women in STEM, become a reality. We know that in 2016, women accounted for 21 per cent of undergrad engineering students and 14 per cent of professional engineers. I want to salute their work and also the people from my riding that approached me to raise the issue with you. Thank you. Thank you for the member of service, the member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, as people across Ontario busy themselves preparing for and joining in the holiday season, I am Joining with our local MAD Canada Waterloo Region chapter and reminding motorists that along with the rejoicing, we all have a responsibility to prevent impaired driving. MAD's annual Project Red Ribbon campaign provides an annual reminder of the importance of driving sober. And this year, with the oncoming of cannabis legislation, that reminder takes on an even greater importance. We've all seen the tragic impacts of drunk and impaired driving on our highways. It was one year ago this week that I regretted to report that the same day MAD Waterloo launched Project Red Ribbon in 2016, a 29-year-old mother from London was killed and her two-month-old sent to hospital in critical condition following a crash with an impaired driver in my community. The heartbreaking incidents that continue despite the threat of serious fines and suspensions, incidents where families are torn apart while perpetrators walk away, speak to the fact that more must be done to put an end to these unacceptable and unnecessary tragedies. <clears throat> As I've said it before, and I'll say it again today, Speaker, impaired driving is unacceptable in our society and in our province, period. And I will continue to work, whether joining in holiday ride checks or strengthening cannabis-impaired legislation this week at committee, to bolster our resolve as the province has, and as society to against all impaired driving before any more lives are lost. Thank you to Mad Waterloo Region and the, all the chapters for their Project Red Ribbon campaign. I want to also thank our officers for their holiday ride checks. Thank the, also to the motorists across Ontario who we make the right choice to drive straight, drive sober as we celebrate the holiday season. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Time for statements is finished. It's now